you're here to learn about the power of a clarity break. My name is Charlie Ray, EOS implementer. This is leadership development time. Let's do this. So we'll start off with some quick objectives and agendas. So objective for today is for you to be open and honest, to develop your skills as a leader, to be empowered, and then ultimately to be transformed. And that's really the, the end goal here is to be developed, empowered, and transformed. Now, how to do that? How are you going to do that? Well, we're going to look at the agenda of what is a clarity break? Why does it matter? Okay, why is it important? And then how do you actually do a clarity break? So some of the practical of the how. And then lastly, I'll kind of throw a challenge at you and give you some next steps. So what is a clarity break? A clarity break is strategic think time. And so there's this great quote by Henry Ford. He says, thinking is the hardest work there is which is probably the reason so few engage in it. And I like to put the word strategic in front because it really is strategic think time. And so when you think about clarity, I want you to think about getting confident on what to do, when to do it, how to do it, why to do it, right? It's all the to-dos. And it's really about having this confidence and competence in your ability to do something and sometimes you feel stuck and you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't know who to talk to. And so taking time to strategically think, to get clear on these answers, uh, to, on these questions is super important. It's some of the hardest work we have to do. It's mentally doing a workout with your brain. So that's what it is. Here's another way to think about it is Ultimately, it's strategic think time. Maxwell, in many of his books, goes into the details of thinking strategic think time. Taking time to sharpen the saw. So, seven habits of highly effective people. Stephen Covey talks about the seventh habit is taking time to sharpen the saw. And so, imagine you're cutting down the tree. You got you got your saw, and you're sawing away, and you've been doing it for hours and hours and hours, and you're working super hard. You're extremely efficient. You have the correct form, good technique, and a friend walks up to you and he says, hey, Charlie, I see you've been trying to cut this tree down. How long have you been doing this? Oh, Bill, I've been doing it for hours, man. I'm exhausted. Oh, gosh, it's it's really, it's some hard work, but I'm making good progress. And he's like, awesome, man. Well, have you taken some time to actually sharpen the saw, get the blade nice and sharp, be more effective at cutting the tree down? But... <laughs> Nah, nah, man, I, I don't have time for that, man. I'm too busy. I'm too busy cutting this tree down. And so it's silly, right? Taking time to sharpen the saw allows you to be more efficient and even more effective. And so that's one kind of analogy. Another analogy is if you're constantly just going and going and going and you're busy, 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 and you're climbing the ladder, and you're working hard, okay, you're climbing the ladder, you get to the top of the ladder and you realize the ladder has been leaning against the wrong side of the wall. And taking time to sharpen the saw, taking a clarity break, slowing down in order to realize, actually, I'm on the wrong wall. I need to move over to this wall and make sure my ladder is on the right wall. That's another analogy. And one third analogy here is the difference, Stephen Covey, again, I um, amazing book, has some really incredible resources, but he talks about efficiency versus effectiveness. And so here's what the difference is. Efficiency is ultimately about trying to do things right. Okay. Um, and here's the analogy. You're in a jungle and you got all these people and you're the manager, okay? So you're managing all these workers and you guys are trying to clear out a path in the jungle and you have all these machetes, you have, again, um, a bunch of axes, you have saws, you have all types of people working together with these tools, people and process, they're working together. You've got a certain process, you're extremely efficient. So you're making sure that they have the correct technique for cutting down these trees. You're making sure that they're communicating effectively with each other and they're making sure that they're understanding one another and you're making really, really good progress. You as the manager, you are making sure they do it the right way do things the right way. And you guys are clearing out this path very quickly, efficiently through the jungle, 
Okay, that's one of the main objectives that you're you've been tasked with as the manager. Now, the leader of the group, he climbs the highest tree in the jungle and he sees the big picture. He steps out, he has binoculars, he looks around, he and he sees the whole picture. The leader is all about trying to be effective. And so the leader shouts down to the manager and he says, "Wrong jungle." We're in the wrong jungle. And the manager shouts back up, shut up, we're, we're making progress, <laughs> right? And so effectiveness is about doing the right things. Efficiency is doing things right. Effectiveness is about doing the right things. So taking time to sharpen the saw, slowing down to get clear on what matters most, on what is the most important thing, that's actually being effective. So that's a little difference between effectiveness and efficiency. Another way to say it is it's working on the business. So another great book here by Michael Gerber, E-Myth, he talks about this concept of working on the business. And so um, with EOS, we have this with the 90-day world. And the concept here is for 90 days, you work in the business and you're working hard, you're being efficient and effective. And then every 90 days, you come up for air and you breathe and you work on the business for a whole day. We call it a quarterly. And at the end of the year, you do a two day annual. So every 90 days, every quarter, you're coming up for a full eight hour day to work strategically on the business. And during your week, you do a weekly level 10 meeting to actually work on the business. So the difference between being in the business and working on the business. When you're in the business, it's the day-to-day -day stuff. Working on the business is having that high-level, visionary, leadership, effectiveness point of view where you're looking to make sure, do we have the right people in the right seats? Do we Are we following the right processes? Are we making sure that we're headed in the right direction? Right, almost thinking about a compass and a map. You're, are you making sure the compass and the map, you guys are on the right chart, you're on the right path for your destination? Another great resource is Bob Beal. He has a lot of great stuff out there, but he says slowing down to clarify priorities. So one of the keys to getting clear is taking time away. And that's really saying I'm going to slow down in order to speed up. Time away to focus. If you want to increase your focus, take some time to slow down to get clear. And your focus is actually going to be sharper. It's going to be better. All right, time to create and clear uh, cl to create clarity and confidence. So Wickman has a big, huge um, analogy that he goes into on confidence, right? Clarity creates confidence, and so what ends up happening is if you're not clear on where to go, you can't confidently lead. So I love what he talks about in multiple of his books about this idea of confidence. And let's go back to the concept of habit number two. And Stephen Covey, and he talks about it's giving a space and a place for improving your effectiveness. And so um, beginning with the end in mind is super important as a leader. And it's also important to make sure you're doing first things first and you're being really, really effective, right, with how you do things, not just efficient. Okay, so that's what a clarity break is. It's slowing down, it's taking time to get clear. Um, why does this matter? I've kind of just, I've been talking all about it, but let's look at some specific details here. Clarity helps you get and stay strategic. And so it's important not to just go through life, going through the motions, right? Being strategic, but not just getting strategic, staying strategic is really important. And there's a big difference between that. When you get strategic, it's good, but to stay strategic, you have to have some ongoing form of a clarity break, whether that's taking time in the morning time to get clear on your priorities for the day, for the month, for the year, whatever that is. Again, for me personally, getting and staying sharp is super, super important. So think getting and staying strategic and getting and staying sharp. I like to do the big three. I call it the big three every day. Michael Hyatt has a lot of stuff about this, but for me, the big three is spiritual growth time, it's physical growth time, it's personal growth time. If I can focus on getting right with the Lord, reading the Bible, praying, journaling, just reflecting, getting really, really clear on what matters most, how to love people the right way, and then physically, how can I physically move my body, and then mentally. I want to be sharp spiritually, physically, and mentally for the day. If I can do all those things 
before my work day gets started, I'm so much sharper to be a great husband, a great father, a great leader. Clarity allows you to see better and it allows you to see further and it allows you to see faster. And so when you're clear on things, you can actually have a better idea of exactly what it is. And so let's go to the analogy of the glasses, right? If you can't see clearly, it's confusing. But if you are clear, you can see better, you can make better decisions. And it allows you to actually see further, think about binoculars that are clear, and you can see the enemy coming, you can see problems that are coming faster. So really important as a leader. You will be able to lead yourself better if you have clarity. And so clarity is one of the best ways you can do as a leader to learn how to lead yourself. Let's, let's take, for example, emotional intelligence. So emotional intelligence, your EQ, is being aware of two specific words. It's having um, knowledge and confidence and competence on these two specific words. And the words are awareness and management. And so not only are you aware as a emotionally intelligent leader, you're effective if you're first aware of your feelings and aware of your emotions and aware of how things are affecting you. And you're able to manage that awareness in such a way where you're able to stay calm and collected and differentiated as a leader, but you're also able to then help others. And so the second part of the emotional intelligence is awareness of others' emotions and feelings and how things are affecting them and management. You're able to interact with the group. So you're able to read the room. You're able to see how your tone, your timing, your communication tactics um, how people are listening or not listening, how people focus and or are they distracted. You're able to see these things better if you're able to be clear. So there's a ton of advantages to having clarity. And then two big ones is confidence and courage. And this goes back to the, the idea of being really, really clear on where you're going. Okay, and so let's think about you're driving through some fog. If you're in a Ferrari and you're driving up and through the mountains and it's a clear, beautiful day, you can go pretty fast, right? You're, you feel confident and, and you have courage to actually step, put the pedal to the metal. But let's say you hit um, a storm and, and a bunch of fog comes in. You're probably going to slow down. Or let's say there's a wreck up ahead and a bunch of smoke and you can't see clearly. Your confidence doesn't go up as high because you're not as confident that you can just hit pedal to the metal and you're not going to be as courageous. So you're probably going to need to slow down. That's the wise thing to do. Here are some additional reasons. Clear is kind. And so Renee Brown in many of her books and concepts is this idea of you're not being nice, you're being kind. And so to be kind is to be clear. We have a saying at EOS, open and honest. And so open to the idea of, hey, be open to trying something new and be honest, giving feedback. Yeah, this is what I like. This is what I didn't like. I, I, I am willing to be open and honest with you. Clear is kind. When you're not clear, it's actually not kind. Hey, here's the expectations. That's kind. It's very, very clear, black and white. This is what I am expecting of you as your boss, your manager, your leader. And so the opposite is true as well. So like I said, open and honest is important. Clarity allows you to take action. When you're not sure what to do, if you slow down a little bit and you get, ask a couple questions, you can actually take action faster. And another thing is clarity allows you to slow down. When you are more clear, you can slow down and say, is this really the best use of my time? Should I really be doing this? And so when you're clear, you actually can slow down to then be more effective. Everything comes back to this idea of effectiveness versus efficiency. Clarity also allows you to speed up. And so once you're clear, once the fog has lifted from your head, you now can go faster further. Clarity allows you to be wise and considerate. And so wisdom really is making sure that you're doing the right thing in the right way at the right time and being considerate of how it's going to affect you and affect others. And that's really loving people the way that you would want to be treating them the way you would want to be treated. That's really truly loving to them. Clarity allows you to get and stay focused. And again, it goes back to the idea of the being sharp. So if you feel like you're losing focus, take a clarity break. You'll be able to refocus. Now, let's look at how. How do you actually take a clarity break? So um, in the book, How to Be a Great Boss, pages 74, 75, they give a list of questions. Incredible book. It's one of the skills that you need to learn to be a great boss, to be a great manager, a great leader, and ultimately just to be somebody who wants to be an effective human being, right? Um, 
these are some questions that you can take from that book. And so again, they're here. I wrote an article on it. You can look at them there. I'm not going to read over every single question, but the questions really are about getting yourself a notepad. Get yourself a notepad and just take 15 minutes and ask some questions. Get clear. Get in a place where you have no distractions. Gino Wickman is kind of famously known for going to Starbucks once a week, every week, and he just lets the ideas flow out of his mind into a yellow legal pad. Get yourself, uh, use your phone if you want for a, a voice memo. So sometimes I'll do this. I'll go for a walk and I'll just kind of have my, my AirPods in and I'll just talk. I'll verbally process and record it. And at the end of the 15 minutes, I'm asking myself this question, what became more clear? Or where do I feel like I have more confidence? Or how am I uh, able to step into this situation with more courage? So clarity, confidence, courage, asking questions is one of the ways to help you get clear. So there's some questions on vision. There's some questions on self. So am I focusing on the most important things is really important. There's a few questions maybe related to process, right? What are the processes that are, that are working really well? And what, are, what are not working well? What processes do I feel like I need to, to change? And then what do I want to do about it, right? There's also a ton of people, 80% of the problems within businesses and really in life in general are related to people. And so do we have the right people in the right seats? Are you delegating the right way? Are you making sure people are in such a... Um, correct position within the department or within their seat that they are leveraging their strengths uh, where are some conflicts coming up and how can you how can you resolve those conflicts how can you have a fierce conversation right i'm open and honest you're courageous you're clear so these are some ones that are really important another one is i really like the question of how can i be more proactive instead of reactive and so at the end of the day questions help you get clear Right. When you when you want to focus, you can ask questions. Bob Beal has a great uh, little uh, series out there called Focus by Asking. And each each um, section in his audio series, he has different questions to ask to get clear and get focused on certain topics. All right. Reflection. Your turn. So we've talked about what a clarity break is. We've talked about why it matters. And we've also talked about how. How do you actually do it? You just, you just get yourself a legal pad, get yourself uh, your phone with a voice memo, and verbally process out loud. Or if it helps you to journal and write down and let the thoughts just flow out on paper. Okay. Another quick practical application. If you're feeling overwhelmed, if you feel anxious, if you feel like you have so much to do, and not enough time to do it, get yourself, again, the legal pad. You can use a whiteboard. Get yourself a blank piece of paper, a piece of print paper. It has no borders on it. And just write down everything that's on your mind, everything you need to do. Just the act of writing down all the things you need to do for that day or that week or that month, whatever it is, you can breathe. You can look at it objectively and hold it up and say, okay, when am I going to do this? And does this really matter? And how important is this? And why am I so worried about doing this? So what I'm saying is if you're not sure how to do something, start. Clarity comes through action. If you want to get clear on how to write your paper, right? Let's go back to back in the school days. You get stuck and you're staring at a blank empty screen and you don't know how to write the paper for school. Just start. Just by starting it, you're going to become more clear. So sometimes if you're not sure what to do, just take action and you become more clear. I would encourage my overthinkers out there, okay, I'm one of them, people who are super detailed and just over the top with the details and they just overanalyze everything, take action. Stop um, Stop letting paralysis of analysis get the best of you, okay? Take action. You'll get more clear 80%. Perfection is is the enemy of progress. So question for you right now. Hit pause on this video after you hear me answer the, ask you these questions. What did you learn about a clarity break? What positive results would you experience in your personal and professional life if you started to practice this concept of taking a clarity break more often? And then lastly, in the next 30 days, when are you going to do it? Right now, hit pause on this video Pull out your calendar, block it in. 30 days, all you got to do is one clarity break. It could be five minutes. Go ahead and hit pause, answer these questions, 
and take some time to reflect on what you just learned. Okay, hopefully you were able to do the exercise and you were able to actually time block and, and lock it in your calendar on when you're going to do your clarity break. So last couple things before you actually go and do the clarity break, here are just some quick tips. Try this. Get out of your office. Go for a quiet place where there's no distractions, right? Go for a walk. Get outdoors. Change your environment. Focus on the business or maybe on yourself. So many times as a leader, you're giving and pouring and um, I know for me, I'm a husband, I'm a father, so so many times in my, my personal life, I'm constantly giving to my wife or giving to my kids, but do you take time to be able to focus on yourself a little bit and say, what are some life-giving activities that I can do to stay sharp, to be effective? For me, it's to be patient, to be present with my kids, to be intentional with my wife. How can I be intentional to be patient, to be present? So taking time to focus on yourself will help you become a better leader, a better husband, a better leader uh, for your kids, a uh, father, uh, a better spouse. Ask specific questions. What's becoming more clear during during your clarity barrier? Again, it could be five minutes. I like 15 minutes. 15 minutes is good. Sometimes 30 minutes if I have a little bit more time. What am I learning about myself? How can I celebrate the wins? What progress am I seeing? When you ask good questions, you get good answers. When you ask bad questions, you get bad answers. If you don't ask any questions, you don't really get any answers. But if you ask profound, powerful questions, you're going to get profound, powerful answers. That's a, a quote and a concept straight from Bob Beal, but he talks about this idea of asking questions to get focused. And then lastly, consider this. At the end of your clarity break, when you get done, just take a couple minutes and do a quick evaluation. What worked? What didn't work? What did you like about it? What can you improve for next time? Uh, maybe you don't really like going for a walk, and instead you want to do it on a stationary bike. Okay, change it up. So at the end of the day, my, my challenge to you is just try it. Here are some additional tips I would encourage you to stop putting it off, okay? Go ahead and commit to it. Do it. Have electronics around that might distract you. That's something you want to avoid doing unless it's going to help you focus like having a voice recorder of some sort, the voice memo on the iPhone, for example. Try to solve everything in one clarity break. Yeah, good luck. Uh, most of the time, you're going to have a ton of ideas, and you may be able to focus on one or two of them, but you're not going to be able to solve everything. And so you can actually put them into your short-term or long-term issues list to be able to solve later. Um, so the, the reality here is you're not trying to solve everything. You're just trying to get stuff in your head out, and, out on paper so you can objectively look at it. Okay, what's your next steps? Do it. You already, you already have it blocked in. Actually do the clarity break. In the next 30 days, commit to it. Prioritize and protect it. Once you have prioritized it, protect it. Don't let anything else. If somebody, another important meeting comes up, I mean, unless it's one of your highest paying clients, I would say, I'm sorry, but I already have a meeting. You don't have to tell people it's a meeting with yourself. It's a meeting to focus on being sharp, being effective, being strategic. Reflect. In the comment section, post your answer to this question. So what became more clear? Um, one of the things is it's important to learn. It's important to then do. But it's most important to reflect on what we learned and what was a result of the doing. So what did you learn? How did it work with what you did? And what became more clear, right? And so how is that going to help you going moving forward into your next stage in your leadership journey? All right, guys. That was the power of a clarity break. Really appreciate your time today. This was Leadership Development Time. Again, my name is Charlie Ray, EOS Implementer. Feel free to reach out to me. Uh, there's my email. There's my phone number. I hope you have a blessed day. Remember, be blessed, not stressed, and hopefully you can take action to get clear. All right, talk to you later.